Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you. Of course, we're pleased to be joined by the one, the only Michael Markosh. And you know, when he's on here, you know what we're going to talk about. Of course, it's either NFL or Cleveland stuff. Um, no, but this is, uh, this is week one of the NFL season. And uh, yeah, yeah, Michael will be joining us throughout the year. Why not? Um, we got a fun, fun season ahead of us. It's like the AFC is really, really good. And then there's the, N- well, there's a few good teams in the NFC that are good, but then we'll have to see what happens next. Yeah, no, I mean, of course, I mean, the AFC is loaded. I mean, the quarterback movement this off season, not just quarterbacks, talk about defensive side of the ball. You got wide receivers moving around. I mean, it, the AFC now is loaded, more loaded than I think any conference has ever been uh, in a long time in the league. And, you know, the NFC has some contenders. Obviously, they have the reigning, uh, they have the reigning Super Bowl champions. Uh, and then a couple teams, you know, Tom Brady's out there with the Buccaneers. And, you know, the Packers are probably still going to be pretty good. So, you know, you have the teams in the NFC, though, that can still compete with the, you know, teams in the AFC. It's just the AFC has, I mean, you look at the AFC, you got maybe 14 teams that actually believe that they can make the playoffs this season and only seven can. So you're definitely going to see some teams out of the playoffs that would be surprising to you. Yeah. Wait till you, I don't know if you saw my playoff predictions on Twitter, but I made a big bold one in the AFC. So, yeah, I think I came across them. I don't know if I actually paid attention to them, but uh, I think it did pop up on my timeline. So, yeah. yeah. So that was, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but yeah, go. Uh, let's get you, let's get the, let's start with the big news. Well, today, well, the Steelers named Mitchell Trubisky officially named him as the starter. Um, it's going to be very different in Pittsburgh. What's it? What is it going to be like there? Well, you know, to me, Pittsburgh's like Dracula. Like they don't, they're not going to die. Um, like they're still going to be fine. Like as long as Mike Tomlin's there, it, Mike Tomlin's arguably this like the best coach in football. I mean, some people might consider him that I, I, he's definitely in the top three for me. Um, But I, you know, they're going to have a very strong defense. Obviously the the questions at the quarterback position are, you know, they're legitimate. Um, It'll be interesting to see how long of a leash Trubisky has before they pull the plug and put Kenny Pickett in. Uh, Cause Kenny Pickett looked good in the preseason. Let's be honest. But at the same time, it's just the preseason. Kenny Pickett was coming in against backup third stringers, practice squad players, players that aren't even, that don't even have jobs right now. So it, it you got to pump the brakes on the preseason. Uh, you know, what you see is not what you get. So I think it'll be interesting in Pittsburgh. I, I like Najee Harris to have a big year. Um, you know, George Pickens, I think is going to be a really good ride receiver for them, but you know, it all comes down to quarterback play and Trubisky, Trubisky has gotten a team to the playoffs, one that had, you know, the number one defense in the league. So if Pittsburgh can play really good defense, you know, hopefully figure out this TJ Watt injury stuff, and, you know, that win games that way, I, I think Pittsburgh could surprise and even be a playoff team. I'm hearing a lot of people are saying the Vikings might be a contender in the NFC North. I, 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 I get that. Um, I personally don't agree with that. I, I'm not as high on the Vikings as I think a lot of people are. I, I think it's less about love of the Vikings and hatred of the Packers. Like, no one wants to take the Packers this year. Everyone's sick of the Green Bay Packers. You know, Devontae Adams isn't there anymore. So there's a lot of question marks surrounding the Packers. So, like, I totally understand it to, like, anyone that doesn't want to take the Packers and is sick of it. But, like, at the end of the day, they're still the best team in that division. Like, their defense is loaded. Rodgers is Rodgers. He's going to make things work. Um, the O-line is, you know, piecemeal, but it'll work. And, you know, at the end of the day, I just don't think the Vikings can necessarily keep up. At some point, the Vikings have to beat the Packers, and they haven't done that consistently in, you know, a long time. So I would probably still like the Packers in the North. Uh, I think the Vikings are a good team, but I think they're a bit overrated. Okay. Um, Last thing before we get to picking games and maybe season predictions as well. Um, The NFC South, we haven't really talked about them that much. Well, we kind of have. But outside of the box, do you expect the Falcons, Panthers, or Saints to do anything this year? I really like the Saints. I like them a lot. Um, I think the Saints have a top three defense, if not the best defense in the entire league. I think they're going to be the the reason that the Saints are successful. I mean, we know on offense, Jameis Winston has his limitations, and he'll make his mistakes, and he's going to do 
you know, Jameis Winston things. But I like his pass catchers a lot, too. They still have Alvin Kamara in the backfield for this season, the whole season at least, because his suspension is probably going to get pushed to next season. Then you got, you know, Michael Thomas, Chris Olave, Jarvis Landry on the outside, Adam Troutman, the tight end. Um, they lost their left tackle in the offseason, but they replaced him in the draft. So, I mean, I think I like the Saints a lot. I actually think they're a little bit underrated. Um, as for, like, the Falcons and the Panthers, I Falcons I don't think are going to be very good. Panthers up to do. Panthers have a lot of questions to answer, especially at the head coach position. Um, but New Orleans is a team that I think is – I mean, people forget how good they were when James Winston was on the field last year. And then he got hurt week eight, and then it kind of went downhill from there. But they get a full season from James Winston. He can play at the level that he played at last year. I think that the Saints can really do well. I, they could potentially win that division. With that defense that they have, it's certainly possible. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know I want to ask you a lot of, a lot of stuff, but in concerns of time, um, we got to get to uh, – Season predictions, and then we'll get into game predictions for this week, though, too. Um, I love it. Go through the divisions and um, tell me who's winning, and then the three wild cards for each league for the NFC and the AFC, and then we'll go from there. Okay. So, um, truth, I mean, I actually already have these done uh, with my, uh, in my family. We, before I come up to school every year, we like have to put like down on paper exactly what our predictions are. Okay. So, um, I should, I should already have them here. Um, and we'll start in the AFC. Uh, AFC East, I got the Bills winning that division. I, I think there's – I don't think there's a team that can compete with them in that division. Uh, not – or really one that can really keep it close. I think they're going to win that one by a few games. Uh, AFC North, I'm actually going to take the Ravens. Uh, I think the Ravens are one of the most underrated teams coming into this season. They had a – they had an extraordinary amount of injuries a season ago. I mean, they lost two corners, one before the season. They lost their starting two running backs before the season started. Lamar got hurt halfway through and didn't even play the second half of the year. I mean, this is a team that is healthy again. They're coming back, and they are – I think they are the best team in the AFC North, at least, you know, in, with how the, the other teams are currently constructed. So uh, I'll take Baltimore in the North. In the South, I'm going with the Colts. Um I, I think it's interesting because the Titans, I think, are still a very strong contender. Uh, I just – I like what the Colts did. I think Matt Ryan's going to be a good fit there. Jonathan Taylor is obviously a beast. Uh, their defense, really, really solid. And overall, I just think they're going to beat the Titans this year. And then in the, the West, it's the Chiefs world. Um, I, I, I understand a lot of teams got better. The other three teams in the division got a lot better. But in order to take the throne, you got to beat the king, and the Chiefs have been the king for the last – six years or so so i don't see that changing this year i think um patrick mahomes is still the best qb in the division uh, by a month by a, by a pretty good margin i'd say and i i like them to figure it out and be okay and i think the chiefs still win the west uh, and and I, and I have them out of the playoffs yeah i think they win the division i i still think the chiefs are good I, like i'm not I'm not gonna buy on this downfall of the chiefs again i think it's just people trying to not like the Chiefs and not pick the Chiefs. And, and I can understand that. Uh, my three wild card teams, I'm going to have the Chargers. I think they're going to get in this year. I think they're finally going to get over the hump. Uh, I like the Bengals to get in as the uh, the number two team in the AFC North. And then, you know, you know me, I have to do it um, as no, much as it's um, – No, you as don't. Much, as hard as it is to no, see it, envision it, um, I got the Browns sneaking in as the seventh seed. I do. Why? Why, why are we putting them in? But, I think I think they're one of the seven best teams in the AFC, and you have to take this into account. I don't know what the number is. I believe that Jacoby Brissett needs to go six and five in the first eleven games. I think he can go six and five. I think there's a chance the Browns start four and zero, plain and simple. I'm not saying it's going to happen. In fact, I don't think it's going to. I'm telling you, there's a chance they start the season four and zero. If they start the season four and or even three and one, I think six and five is a realistic possibility. If they can get to six and five when Deshaun Watson takes the field in Houston for the final, what has he got? Six games of the year. Yeah. Um, Watson, I think, can take them the rest of the way and they can sneak into the playoffs at around 10 and seven, maybe a nine and eight type deal. Um, I, I, I'm not trying to overhype or anything. It's just I look at some of the other teams that might be getting into those spots, like, you know, um, 
Vegas or Denver. I don't like Denver this year. I think they're going to have a growing year. Um, I actually, I actually have them in last in the AFC West. Um, I just think it's going to take them a year to gel with Russell Wilson. It's not something that like, I, I think Denver is going to be really good. I think they could be nine and eight and finish last. I just, I don't think some team in that division has to finish last because they're going to play each other. And I just don't like Denver. And so I, I do think the Browns, I mean, yeah, call me biased, like whatever, but I'm going to do it. Um, I, it's not like I have, you know, getting crazy to the seventh seed. I think they back in and I think they steal the last spot. Okay. And then now we go over to the NFC. Okay. So in the NFC, we'll start with the East again. I got the Eagles winning the NFC East. Um, mainly just for the reason that no one wins the NFC East in back-to-back years. It hasn't happened in like the 21st century. Um, so also I just, the Cowboys, the coaching situation, the offense, it's, it's, it's kind of a, it's a big question mark. And so I don't really know exactly how they're going to be. I actually like the Eagles a lot. They got a lot of good wide receivers. Jalen Hurts is an improve it year. We'll see if he plays well or not. I, I think that's what this division is going to come down to is the play of Jalen Hurts. Um, but overall, I like the Eagles. Um, so I'll take them in the East In the North. I'm, I kind of you know foretold this a few minutes ago, but I, I still have the Packers winning the NFC North. I, they're the best team in it. Their defense is incredible. They're going to play really, really well in that situation. And going to Lambeau in December, we know is it, it's an it's almost an impossible task. Um, so I'm still going to take the Packers. This Vikings hype is getting a little bit out of control for me. They have a new head coach. They have a new offensive system. You know, and Kirk Cousins still is the starting quarterback. And while he's a fine starting quarterback, quarterbacks win divisions, and that's Aaron Rodgers. So I'll take the Packers in the North. In the South. Um, as much as I talked up the Saints, I'm still taking the Buccaneers. I think that they will be um, the best team in that. They might be the best team in the NFC. Um, I mean, that offense is absolutely stacked. I do have questions about their offensive line. I still don't know what they're going to do at center. Um, but overall, I think, you know, Tom, Tom Brady is going to be fine. He's Tom Brady. Um, he's going to find a way. They're going to win games. That defense is still loaded. Um, it's a very, very, very good team. By far the best in that division. So I'll take Tampa. And in the West, no surprise there. I'll take the I'll take the reigning Super Bowl champs. I'll take the Rams um, to to repeat in that division. Um, and I think it'll be a tight division. I don't think they're going to win it. I don't think the Rams are going to go like thirteen and four and win the division. I think they win it with like an 11, 6, 10 and seven type year. I think that's a division like the AFC West. I think they're going to beat up on each other a little bit besides Seattle. Um, and I think that that could be a three that could be a three team division in the postseason. Um, and then the three wild card teams in the NFC. Um, who did I have? Oh, yeah, I had the 49ers. They were my first one that got in. Uh, I like them a lot. I think they're gonna, I think they're gonna be fine. I think they're gonna be solid again. Uh, my second wild card team was the Cowboys. I still think they get in. They're they're too talented um to really not make it. I just think they're gonna lose a game to the Eagles down the stretch that they shouldn't. It's gonna cost them the division. And then my third wild card team, I just talked about them, the Saints. Um I like their defense a lot. I think Jameis is going to make enough plays, you know, make few enough mistakes that I actually like the Saints to get in there and snag the final seat. Wow. So there it is. Yep. Yeah. So, so you completely like, so I'm, I'm try, trying to process all the teams you left. I mean, it's like you like five, six teams you left down the AFC. Um, three teams from the AFC North getting in. That's yep. interesting um and who knows pittsburgh could get in too i don't know um yeah i just it's hard for me to take all three teams in the north because my, well my the and then there's also miami get new england uh, i'm not sold on miami i'm not sold on Tua. Either. um but I, yeah i mean it's what i talked about to open the show like the afc there's probably 14 teams that think they have a legitimate chance to get again and so you have to some teams are going to get left out and you know, I personally am not buying the Broncos hype. Um, I, I, it's fine if you do. I'm all, like, I'm going to be wrong on probably half of these teams. I think last year, out of the 14 predictions, I think I literally picked five of the 14 playoff teams right. And those were like the gimmies. So, you know, it, we'll see how it goes. It's just, you know, and the Browns are the Browns. I'll, I'll put them in the end. Uh, I'll just slide them in. But um, I, I mean, I legitimately think they have a realistic chance. So I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't think it was realistic. And okay. so um, I'll go with that. And those are the those are the seven teams from each conference. I have. All right. So, um, Super Bowl predictions. Uh, I got Bills Rams. 
Uh, I think the both of them are going to be number one seeds. Yeah. And uh, maybe the Rams are a two seed, but I believe I predicted them to be the one seed. Uh, Bills, Rams, I got Buffalo. Yeah. So I, 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 guess the Bills here. I got the same matchup. I, I, I just think this is – if it's if this is not Buffalo's year, when is it going to be? Um, exactly. I, don't know. I mean, the football gods, somewhat, some way, they got to find a way to win it. Um, yeah. I agree. Who knows that way too well, I guess. All right. Speaking of the Bills and the Rams, they're playing each other this week uh, on, uh, in a couple of days in Los Angeles. What you got? You know, it, it's tough because I haven't made my picks yet. My picks aren't uh, due till Sunday, or I guess some of them are going to be due Friday. Um, well, obviously this one before Thursday, but um, I'm – so the, I'll say this right now. These may not be my final predictions by week's end, um, but at least right now I, I'm leaning with the Rams. Um, and it, it, ha, it doesn't really have a lot to do with the fact that I think the Rams are necessarily the better team. The Rams are very good. Uh, the Bills are also very good. And I don't think it's a knock on the Bills to pick the Rams in this game. I just think the energy in SoFi that night with the banner and the, the rings and just the whole, you know, just the whole, you know, gravitas of the game. I just think the energy is going to get the Rams pumped up. Uh, Super Bowl champs rarely lose this game, or the, the defending Super Bowl champs rarely lose the opener. Um, I just think they're going to squeak it out. I think it's going to be a really good game, really close, down to the end. I'll take the Rams, though. All right. All right, here's the next one. Eagles traveling to Detroit to take on the Lions. You know, it's, it's funny. I see a lot of Lions fans that are actually optimistic about this game. Um, they think that they can win and they can win. They won't. Um, I'll, I'll take the Eagles there on the road. Uh, I think it's still, the, the Lions are still a year or two away. So give me the Eagles. Yeah, I will take the Eagles as well. Oh, and I'm going to take the Bills. Why not? Um, okay, so here's the next one. San Francisco travels to Chicago to take on the Bears. Another one of those odd games, you got a team coming all the way across country week one playing in a one o'clock slot. But since it's week one, San Francisco will probably get in early to adjust to the, the time change. Uh, I'll take uh, San Francisco in, in Trey Lance's debut. I, I think I think their defense is going to win them the game. I don't know if Trey, Trey Lance is like you're necessarily going to come out and just light the world on fire, um, but their defense will shut down the Bears offense. So I'll take the Niners. All right. All right, here's an excellent Pittsburgh and newly starting quarterback Mitchell Trubisky travel to Cincinnati to take on the Bengals, the defending AFC champs. This is a tough one. This might be one of the tougher games of the week. I mean, we remember last year, Pittsburgh opened up on the road in Buffalo and everyone's like, oh, it's Buffalo. They got no chance. Pittsburgh came in there and they, they beat them. They beat them up pretty good. Um, but I think this is a different story. I do like Cincinnati in this game at home. Um, I just – on that offense, there's just so many weapons to cover. And they beat the Steelers last season twice. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't know if the, the Bengals are necessarily going to be coming out. Like, same thing, like similar to what I said about the Niners. Like, I don't know if they're just going to come out. Their offense is just going to be, you know, all like really, really good. I, I actually doubt that that's the case. But I think they'll do just enough to get the Steelers. So I'll take the bank. All right. All right, here's the next one. The Patriots travel to Miami to take on the Dolphins. Another really good game. You know, one of those um, games where, um, you know, with two teams that are in kind of the – they're fighting for second place in the AFC. You kind of feel like possibly a playoff spot. Uh, last year, Miami, I think, beat them twice. Uh, I'll take Miami. I just think they're the better team. And at home, New England never plays well in Miami. It's just it's just a known fact. So I'll take the Dolphins to win the, for the opener at home. All right. Here's the next one. Cleveland Browns travel to Carolina to take on Baker Mayfield and the Panthers. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, I mean, obviously, yeah, this one to me means a little bit more. Uh, you know, there's obviously nerves. You know, it's week one. It's the opener. The Browns are 121 and one in openers since they came back in 1999. It, it's abysmal. Um, they haven't won one since 2004, I believe, when they beat Baltimore in the opener. Um, so, but I, I, I don't really know if this game is as hard to predict as most people are thinking it is. Uh, I'm taking the Browns. I think they're the better team. Um, as people, you know, as people say with, oh, well, Baker knows what the Browns do best. Yeah, well, the Browns know what Baker does too. Like they know his strengths, and more importantly, they know his weaknesses. And 
I think they're going to be in the backfield a lot. I think they're going to put a lot of pressure on him. And I just, I like the Browns. I think they'll make less mistakes and they'll, uh, they'll pull away at the end. So I'll take Cleveland. All right. Next game, the Colts travel to Houston to take on the Texans. Colts next. <laughs> it's just, yeah. It's just, we, we know, we know what the deal with in Houston is, you know, I, I'm not hundred percent. I mean, I'm sure they're going to try to win. It's just, they just don't have the talent to keep up. So that this is probably the, like the easiest pick of the week. I'll take the Colts. All right. All right. It's uh, next game. The, tra- uh, the Saints travel to Atlanta to take on the Falcons. Another good game. I, I love these divisional matchups like early on in the year when uh, you, you get to kind of see it, it, it's one of those measuring stick games. You see how your training camp went right away against a divisional opponent. Uh, I'll take the Saints on the road. It, it, kind of the same deal as last time. I just don't think the Falcons are very good. Uh, they have a lot of nice young talent. It's just, I don't think it's, they don't have enough around it. Marcus Mariota in his first game at quarterback. I just, I think he's going to have a long day with dealing with that Saints defense. So New Orleans. Yep. All right. Here's the next one. The Ravens travel to MetLife to take on the J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. Uh, Joe Flacco revenge game. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Correctly. Oh. Joe Flacco is going to be the quarterback. Um, yeah, give me the Ravens. Uh, that's one of the easier ones of the week, too. Uh, if Zach Wilson was back there, I think they could keep it interesting at home. But Ravens are, like I said, I think they're going to be out for blood this year. So I'll take Baltimore. Sounds good on that one. All right. The Jaguars travel to Washington to take on the newly named Commanders. <sighs> yeah, I don't really want to pick anybody in this game. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's it's such a weird one. Um, because, like, you want – I think a lot of people are going to take Jacksonville. Um, and I think it, it might be fair, too. But – I'm actually going to go the other way. I'm going to go with Washington. I think the commanders get the win. I just, the defense is healthy. I mean, I know Chase Young is going to start the year on the, the pup list, so he's going to be out. But um, I, I, Carson Wentz is, you know, he, he's okay. He's the best thing they've had a quarterback in a long time. So, and he's got Terry McLaurin, who's the best receiver he's ever had. So I, I, I don't even know why. I think it's probably just because they're at home. Uh, I'll, I'll take Washington on a flyer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, we just talked about these two teams. The Packers travel to Minnesota to take on the Vikings. See, this is actually a game that, despite everything that I said, I think the Vikings won this game. I remember like three seasons ago, these two teams opened up in Minnesota. Minnesota trounced them. I mean, they, they ran all over them. Dalvin Cook had like three touchdowns or something. And I don't know why. I just feel like Minnesota wins this game at home. I think the Packers have some stuff to work out offensively. I don't know if they're going to be ready right away. Um, so, yeah, I'll take the Vikings at home. If this was in Green Bay, I think I'd take the Packers, but I'll take Minnesota. Sounds good. All right, next up, the Giants travel to Tennessee to take on the Titans. Uh, yeah, I'll take the Titans uh, at home, especially Daniel Jones is the quarterback on the other team. I don't know how long he's going to be the quarterback on the other team. Um, Tennessee is just the better team. It, it's plain and simple. Um, Derrick Henry's back. He's healthy. I think they they use the ground game to get up, and then they use it to stay ahead. So pretty easy one. I'll take Tennessee. Next up, the Las Vegas Raiders travel to Los Angeles to take on the Chargers. Yeah, another good one. Everyone, when they see this game, thinks of game 256 from a year ago, obviously Sunday night. Um, that game was tremendous. Probably the game of the year in the regular season. Um, in LA, though, I think the Chargers are going to come out hot. I really do. I think they're going to play a really good game. Herbert, Eckler, you know, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams are showing off that new defense with their new pieces. JC Jackson, Khalil Mactor, when James is back. Uh, yeah, I'll take the Chargers in a, in what's going to be a fun game in LA. I'll take, I'll take them. That's, yeah, that should be, that should be a good one there. All right, next up, the Chiefs travel to Arizona to take on the Cardinals. Yeah, well, um, another another really fun game. I think there's going to be a lot of offense, not a lot of defense here in this game. Uh, obviously, the Cardinals without DeAndre Hopkins for the first six games of the year. I think that plays a factor. I, I'm going to take the Chiefs again. It's just one of those, like, I don't care, like, what you tell me about the Chiefs and how, like, how anyone can tell me, like, they got worse because I don't necessarily think they got worse. I just think they're a little different now. 
Um, but as long as 15's back there, they're going to be okay. So Chiefs on the road, get uh, get Kyler Murray and the Cardinals. The next game, this is the Sunday night game. Um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers travel to Dallas to take on America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, it's America's favorite quarterback with America's favorite team, uh, <laughs> or against America's favorite team, I should say. Um, yeah, this is um, – I think this is going to be another good game. I mean, the schedule makers know what they're doing week one. And, you know, I there's a reason that there's a lot of these – matchups week one they, they wanted to really draw you in for the rest of the way um but i'll take tampa bay uh even on the road uh could be could be a little biased tom brady is my fantasy quarterback for this year so uh, i need him to play pretty well but uh other than that i just they're they're rock solid you know it, it's going to be so hard to beat them this season and uh, dallas has like i said their own issues and i'll take tampa in a close one and Monday night football, you mentioned the schedule makers. They know what they're doing week one. Boy, do they. Um, Denver travels to Seattle in Monday night's game in, in the first weekend of Monday night football and the debut of Joe and Troy on Monday night football on ESPN. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's another easy one. I mean, I, I don't – I can't in good faith pick the Seahawks in this game. I mean, Geno Smith, the quarterback – I mean, I think we all kind of know how that's going to go. Oh, necessarily if Denver's going to play particularly well. Like I said, I have my concerns about Denver and kind of getting off to getting off and running kind of early in the year with them. Um, but, you know, at the same time, like they, they very well could, but they're playing Seattle, a team that they definitely should beat. Seattle is, a, as they would say, sucking for Stroud in the draft, I think. So um, they're going to. I think Denver wins that one going easily. So it'll be an emotional start to the game, obviously, with Russ coming back. But by the end of the game, it's it's just going to be a, a blowout. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this uh, this uh, week one preview. We'll see you next week for week two. How about that, bud? Yeah, yeah, sounds good. All right. We'll talk to you then. Enjoy the games this week. <laughs>